Hey you guys, hope all is well out there. Back with another video. If you joined it for the first time, welcome. I just wanted to talk about the MFX and the SP44 MK2, y'all. I know a lot of DJs, producers, sound engineers, sound designers that purchased this sampler just for the effects alone. As of the recording of this video, it's 36 effects in here. And I noticed 12 more slots, blank slots. So that means that Roland probably has more effects coming. Can't wait for that to happen. Before we get started, if you found some value in this video, I definitely appreciate it if you give it a like. If you didn't find some value because you already know this information or you're a super advanced user and you thought the video would be valuable to somebody that doesn't know anything about the SP, hit that thumbs up for me. I really appreciate it. Let's get on to the video. Tip number one, I'm sure you guys have heard this or seen it around somewhere. If you haven't, it is available to you, but I'm just going to go over it here. You can actually access all your effects by pressing the multi effects button. And that's going to be page one, page two, you hit DJ effects looper and page three, you hit isolator. So page one MFX, page two, DJ effects looper and page three isolator. And once you're in your effects screen, you can select your effects by turning the value wheel and you'll see the cells light up and you can select whatever effect you like or you can just hit the corresponding pad, which I think is a little quicker. And you'll also see the effects being cycled through as you hit the pad. Tip number two, you can change the top effects that come with the SP44 MK2. So the top effects are the filter drive, resonator, delay. You also have the isolator DJ looper and you have actually, you actually have a blank slot here that you can change it to be whatever you want it to be. We'll get into that. But to do that, you can access the page you either hit shift 13 and you scroll over to the effect settings, which is the third tab, or you can hit shift effect settings, which is past 16 and you scroll over to the direct tab. And once you're in the direct tab, you'll see the top five effects. You scroll down to the effects that you want to change. Uh, let's say effects number one, the filter drive, you want to change that. You click the value wheel in, you'll notice it highlighted and you can go ahead and scroll and change it to the effect that you want to change it to. And you can do that with all of these. Tip number three, you can change this default and effects button to any of the 36 effects that you like. This is uh, considered the effects on startup. So when you press that button, it'll be whatever effect that you put into that slot. So in order to do that, you hit shift 16 and you come over to the other tab and you scroll down to MFX top, I have it on stopper, but you can have that any effect that you want it to be. So let's put it on, uh, let's put it on tape echo. Exit. In order for the SP to notice the change, you have to turn it off. So you turn off the SP, you turn it back on, let it do its thing. And now, when you hit the MFX button, it'll be that tape echo that we put in. Tip number four. Now a bit redundant. I don't know why they did it this way. In the last tip, I said you can change this MFX button to whatever you want it to be. If you hold the MFX button, you can actually scroll through all effects while the SP is actually playing. So you can audition effects while it's playing. So let's say if you wanted to do one effect in the first four bars and then change the effect again in the second bar, you can do that holding down the MFX button. So for instance, you can actually cycle through your effects while the SP is playing so you can audition certain effects to see what you like and what you don't like. Tip number five, I'm sure you guys have heard of this. If you're working on a pattern or you're working on a beat or whatever, and you throw some effects on, the effects disappears after three seconds. In order to hold the effect, you simply hit the remain key and then hit the effect. 
and then the screen will stay until you finish doing whatever you gotta do. Tip number six, bus works the same way. If you hit bus, it disappears after three seconds. So to help with that, you gotta bring the machine out of pattern select mode and you can hold down bus and then to keep the bus effects there. Now the only thing with the bus is you have to kind of hold it down. So I know you only have one hand free, but here's a tip. If you hold down bus, it'll keep the screen there. You can use your left hand to do whatever you gotta do, make your changes or whatever. If you're a righty, you can hold down remain, hit bus, and you can use your right hand to make changes. So lefties, hold down bus, the screen to stay, use your left hand. Righties, hold remain, hit bus, the screen to stay, and use your right hand to make changes. Tip number seven, here's something you may know. If you go into an effect and the effects have these arrows here, that means that there's a second page that you can access more parameters. Any effect that has arrows, you hit the value key, you push the value key in, and you can access that second page of parameters if there's an arrow there. Page one, page two. Page one, page two. Tip number eight, you can grab an effect. So let's say you wanna apply an effect really quickly and then bounce in and out. You hold down the value wheel. And you access your effect that way. Tip number nine, you can bypass an effect based on whatever pad you're working on. So let's say you have a particular sound on a particular pad and you want that sound to be bypassed. You do not want an effect on that pad. What you do is you hold down the remain key. Let me demonstrate. The effect is on, hold down remain. There's no effect on the snare now. No effect on the first kick. No effect on the second kick. Let's put it all back on. Turn the effect off. Tip number 10, if you wanna bypass the effects of the entire bank, you hit remain plus the bank key, let me demonstrate. So here we have our sounds on this bank and we're gonna throw an effect on it. So I'm gonna hit remain, bank D. Now there's no effect on it. And I'll bring it back, remain bank D. Remain bank D. And then you can bring it in piece by piece too if you want. So I'm gonna just put an effect on the hi-hat. An effect on the, on the kick. Tip number 11, if you want to swap bus effects, swap bus effect one or bus effects two, this is how you do it. So in order for this to work, you have to make sure that the bus effects are in stack mode. So you hit shift, effect setting, and you see how bus one and two are on top of each other. That's what it, it needs to be in that setting in order for this to work. It cannot be in line like this. It has to be stacked on top of each other in order for this to work. So you exit out of here. And just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna keep this simple as possible. We're gonna add a resonator to bus one. We're gonna add an isolator to bus two. 
and then you simply hold down remain and you toggle bus effects. Tip number 12, you can actually save your MFX settings. So when you make a setting in your multi effects, you can save that. So when you turn off the sampler and you turn it back on, it'll be in that same setting. So in order to do that, you have to make sure that you're out of pattern mode. And let me demonstrate. So here we have a pattern going. You go out of pattern mode, put the effects on. Let's say we want it there. Cut off at 201 and uh, the resonance at 41. You come out of pattern mode, shift, mark. And you just saved your setting. Let's turn the machine off. When you go back into your filter, it's exactly where you left it off at. Tip number 13, after all of that, after all those adjustments that you did, you can have all your effects playing in harmony in one little town, one little happy family. I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add Resonator to bus bus one, bus two. We're gonna add isolator. We're going to apply the isolator to the kick on pad twelve. We're gonna apply the resonator to pad thirteen. Then we're gonna put a cherry on top. By adding bus three and four, add a little reverb. And that's basically it, guys. In a nutshell. And um, I appreciate it. I hope you guys have found something helpful in this video. Of course, keep creating. Keep banging out those beats. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Till then, take care.